Hey everyone, it's Angela, Paisian Farm Girl here, and I've just had a beautiful afternoon in my garden and protege. Oh look, smoke. Means my family's making a campfire. Let's see, I'm going to, oh, I'm gonna cover my lens with the finger, let's see. So, okay, so hi, how are you? Um, it's just been so beautiful, it's absolutely, gorgeous here and I've been playing with my goats and harvesting beets and I realized this year that I love beets. First of all, talk about love. Look what I got at a garage sale this morning. I'm such a sucker for the uh, the hanky, the babushka, whatever you want to call it. And I love this one. I have to wear them when I'm outside because I get like serious um, pregnancy mask still. Not pregnant. And I'm sitting on a soaked cushion. Oh. There goes the pants I'm wearing, they're soaked. Um, it's been, it poured here yesterday. So yeah, I love this, I'm super excited about it. Love it, Cups up, covers up my greasy, dirty farm hair. And, but I have a ton of beets and I'm thrilled because this year, this year I realized that I love beets. So let me show you my stash from today. If you're following on, on Instagram, you saw that I've been braiding a ton of onions today. But look at all those beets. This year I realized I love beets. And um, I think right when I was getting the feel for Periscope, I did a little recipe post on potage pizza and I love sauteing them in a ton of butter and putting them on top of my pizza. Brought in, it's really, I can't hardly see what I'm showing you here. Thanks for the hearts, thank you. Brought in a ton of tomatoes today and there's so many more even though the garden is really winding down. Um, there's just a ton here and also nasturtium because um, you probably know I'm crazy for flower pepper so I make my own flower pepper with rainbow peppercorns and nasturtium and calendula and lemon zest and we like put it on everything all winter long so those will dry out and thank you um, we're just suckers for fresh farm scrambled eggs in the winter and flower pepper. But these beets are so cool. I, this year I did Detroit Reds and I did the, uh, let's see, these pretty yellow ones that are so gorgeous on the inside. And then the pinwheel beets, they're Italian, Chioga or something, I'm not quite sure how to properly pronounce those. But that's kind of my bounty from the day. And then look at this, I love structure. You saw my Instagram picture with my leek pods. I just, there's something about this, and you know what this is. This is um, cilantro, you know? Cilantro seeds for next year, and I think it's so pretty. I love it. So that will go in my greenhouse. Yo. There we go. Which is, let me show you how this works here. So this is my herb garden right here, and then the potage goes off in the back. It's really mangy right now because I'm doing the cookbook and I just discovered it's impossible to write a cookbook and keep up with the garden at the same time. So it's really bad, but we're bringing everything in. You can see right in there, I've got all the lettuce drying out. The nasturtiums totally took over my lavender rose. I have lavender on this side and on this side, but for the first year I successfully did Love Lies Bleeding. We are, um, Door County, Wisconsin Attics, and I just love how all the shops up there grow Love Lies Bleeding, it thrills me. And the zinnias um, are insane. I forever have fresh flowers. Let's walk this way. Don't look at the weeds, they're everywhere. Fresh flowers in the house because I bought these little packs. These little packs, um, no, not little, they're big, a good size pack of zinnia seeds at Tractor Supply um, for $7.99. Thank you. Oh, I should be reading these comments. I'm so sorry. I'm so nervous. I hate this. I'm from Oshkosh. Awesome. Well, I'm right down on the border. Um, thanks. You love this farm. Oh, that's really sweet. It's halfway farm. We're, we're halfway there. But these packs were $7.99. And uh, let's see, we'll go this way. You can see I've got zinnias over there and outside the potage and look some grew up here in a tomato in a tomato cage i mean they're amazing did i get that tub from my mom no actually i got the tub which is going to have a really 
special place in my cookbook. I can't wait for you to see it. But I got the tub from a place in Harvard, Harvard, Illinois, called My Blue Heaven. And it is out on Route 47. Um, and it's just outbuilding after outbuilding after outbuilding, and they're all painted blue. And um, I found the tub out there. So no baby goats yet. No, um, I just got done spending a lot of time with my goats and she's definitely bagging up. Her udder's getting bigger, but you know, I'm a rookie. This is my first time with the kidding. And so, you know, it's just like when you, the first time you're expecting your own baby, you think, oh, this is it. I'm gonna go early. I can't get any bigger than I am right now. Yeah, right. And then you look like a semi two weeks later. So she just keeps getting bigger. Wow, it's bright and my sunglasses are back at the table. She just keeps getting bigger and her udder just keeps getting bigger and so I'm pati patiently waiting because I have a life I'd like to go on with, I have places I'd like to go, but I don't dare leave her. Okay, so you can see, um, at this time of year, I just like let it get mangy. So I'm letting all the lettuce seeds grow and that's what I do. I try to preserve my own seeds as much as possible, but it's not really pretty. What did that say? Oh, I missed that last comment, sorry. So here we go. So I've got a couple more zinnias back here behind the um, the fountain. And let's do this. I'm going to turn this around. Or not. There we go. We have rain in the last... i got to get in the shade. It's so bright. I can't see anything. There we go. So much rain. And my herbs are going bonkers. Bonkers. I'm just giddy. How can I get that to go away? Hang on. I can't see what these people, there we go. Yeah, look at this. This is, um, I, buy, I do buy these rosemary topiary from my mom. And then my greenhouse is right here. It's Southwest Exposure. You can see the remnants maybe through the windows of the onion braids I was doing today in all my planter containers. But. Um, I try to overwinter these and last year I was successful but they were getting a little root bound so I threw them in the ground. Let's put it back up. Thanks for the hearts and they're huge. I mean it looks like something out of Napa Valley where the rosemary turns into a hedge. They're ginormous. They used to be very um, a standard you know very groomed and they're just huge. So once again I'm going to dig them out of the ground and put them in big pots and see if I can overwinter them in my um, greenhouse. So that's it. It's not really um, a huge variety of herbs. I love ladies mantle and I've tried to make it symmetrical. Let's see if I can pull back here. So I've got ladies mantle on either side, thyme and oregano lining the path and um, lots of rosemary and lavender mint which I've just let kind of go because we rent here. I'm in zone, let's see, I'm in zone 5B probably. Um, sage and uh, lemon balm and a fountain that's not on right now which is tragic. So what I do is I do, um, I'll cut a lot of this back and in fact I make a ton of herb butter and put it up in the freezer for the winter. So pretty soon, I'm I'm stalling though, because I'm so enjoying this right now. I don't want to cut it back. Thank you for the hearts. Um, but I, I'll cut it back and bring it all into the Cuisinart and make a ton of herb butter. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about freezing beets. If you have a big pile of beets here like I do, um, this is how you do it. I'm gonna tell you real quick. Uh, what you're gonna do is I've got some of them that are really huge, like this beautiful golden one here. And then I've got some that are smaller, like this Detroit Red. And you're just gonna wash them off and leave the root attached. And you can trim some of the leaves off. You can preserve the leaves, but mine are pretty mangy. Um, so I, I don't wanna eat that. I'm gonna let my goats and my rabbits eat that. And just go ahead and wash them off and boil them. The big ones you wanna boil for like 45 minutes and the smaller ones you want to boil for 20. And after that point, the um, you want to be able to stab them with a fork and so you'll just rinse them off and like plunge them in cold water for about 10 minutes and um, then the skins will kind of slide off 
and you can slice them and put them in your freezer bags and keep them in the freezer for the winter, which is awesome. Well, there are beet, beet recipes in the cookbook. Let's see. The cookbook, here, I'll give you a little, a little snippet of the cookbook. The cookbook is really an infusion and it really chronicles my journey from not knowing very much about the kitchen at all, knowing like some of the things my mom did growing up and, um, well, long story short is that when I first got married, I could hardly even touch raw chicken. I didn't even dare prepare meat and now I know how to butcher one, okay? So um, I'm taking a lot of heritage recipes and recipes of my mom's and my grandmother and my great grandma and um, I'm kind of infusing them with what I've learned and my passion for France and herbs and pine nuts and balsamic vinegar and things that great grandma never thought of using. So. Um, as far as beets, um, I've got a recipe in the cookbook, apples and onions. It's a family favorite inspired by our obsession with Laura Ingalls and her husband, Almanzo Wilder, and it's something that his mother used to make, and one day we tried it, and we loved it as a family. And so, actually, you can enhance a dish like apples and onions with beets or with mascarpone cheese or with chev. And so, yes, there are a few um, beet recipes in the cookbook. So that's how you freeze beets, crash course in beets. That's my potager here in mid-September. I'll turn one more time, let's see. I know it's really small on, on Periscope, but that's it. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. Love me some Laura too. Oh my goodness, I am a junkie. I'm almost done with West From Home. It's so amazing. I wish that there were the corresponding letters. West From Home is the book that she wrote to her husband when she went to San Francisco to visit her daughter. And it's so incredible to think of her growing up and traveling the country in a covered wagon and then going to San Francisco for the World's Fair and all that she saw and it's her letters back um, to Almanzo and I wish there were like the corresponding letters from him. That would be super cool. But okay, that's it. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and the blog and all that jazz and I'll be back soon. Talk to you later.